Deputy Foreign Minister. Mr. Foreign Minister Chavez, Mr. 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 Chav
and we'll go down the Potomac and we'll see Mount Vernon from the river. That's George Washington's home. Mr. President, has any progress been made today in these talks? Uh, just We're just beginning. beginning. You think there'll be a summit meeting as a result of this meeting? Did you get a letter from uh, the foreign minister? No, I understand he is delivering. <laughs> Mr. Foreign Minister, can you tell us what's in the letter? Well, if I tell you, what shall I tell the president? The same, the same thing. Tell us what will tell the president. There are good things in that letter. Like what? Is there a summit date in that letter, Mr. Foreign Minister? No date. But the summit is necessary. Lights, please. Thank you. Are you predicting there will be one? Well, I would like to talk to you maybe after my meeting with the president. Thank you. Thank you. Let's go, please. There are many Soviet reporters in Washington here. You must be a Russian officer, Chief. And in Moscow, we have many reporters from the United States. And I must say, they work very actively in Moscow. Yes. I had a meeting with some uh, members of your press, along with uh, the press of other of Eastern European countries the other day. They were very good in their questions. Yes, I read your interview. Familiar faces here, too. <laughs> no, we earlier talking about California weather. We have a sense of humor about it also. There was a comedian in the East, once in California performing. He said, California is the only place in the world where the tallest trees in the world are full of I am very pleased that today the United States and the Soviet Union will sign the agreement to establish nuclear risk reduction centers. 
This agreement is another practical step in our efforts to reduce the risks of conflict. Мой практический шаг, предпринимаемый нами в целях сокращения опасности возникновения конфликта, который без этого мог бы произойти из-за случайности просчета или ошибки. Сегодняшнее соглашение идет дальше того, что сейчас существует, и создает первый новый прямой канал связи. Applications required under existing confidence building measures and could play a key role in exchanging the information necessary for effective verification of future arms control agreements. Центры по уменьшению ядерной опасности будут играть важную роль в дальнейшем уменьшении возможности возникновения конфликтов между Соединенными Штатами и Советским Союзом. That we have received over several years on nuclear risk reduction from Senators John Warner and Sam Nunn. Со стороны Соединенных Штатов это соглашение. Former Assistant Secretary of Defense Richard Pearl and my Special Assistant Robert Linhart, and to the Soviet delegation headed by Ambassador Alexei Obakov for their skill and dedication in successfully concluding the negotiations. Также советской делегации, возглавляемой послом Обуховым, за их умение и приверженность к этому делу, что привело к успешному завершению переговоров. This agreement complements our ongoing and promising efforts in Geneva to achieve for the first time deep, equitable and effectively verifiable reductions in Soviet and American nuclear и обещающие усилия в Женеве направленные на то, чтобы впервые добиться глубоких, справедливых и эффективно контролируемых сокращений советских и американских ядерных арсеналов. Господин иностранный министр, я доволен, что вы подписываете это соглашение сегодня и жду того дня, когда мы с генеральным секретарем сможем подписать еще более исторические соглашения в нашем общем поиске мира. Господин президент, дамы и господа, визита государственного секретаря господина Шульца в Москве было подписано соглашение о мирном сотрудничестве в космосе. Сегодня о центрах по уменьшению ядерной опасности. Мистер президент, In April, last April, during the visit of Secretary of State Schultz to Moscow. We signed an agreement on peaceful cooperation in space. Today we are signing an agreement тобой осязаем и шаг практической реализации согласия, которого Михаил Сергеевич Горбачев и вы, господин президент, достигли в Женеве. This agreement marks a tangible step in the practical implementation of the understanding which Mikhail Gorbachev and you, Mr. President, reached in Geneva. Nuclear war should never be fought, you said both. Let us hope... ...как о том условились Рейкьявике, генеральный секретарь ЦК КПСС и президент Соединенных Штатов Америки. Главное, приложить максимум усилий, чтобы это действительно произошло удовлетворению. Мы постарались немного ослабить давящий груз опасений, неопределенности и тревог, от которого устали люди, устала наша земля. Пользуясь случаем, хочу сердечно поблагодарить всех, кто упорно и самоотверженно в течение двух лет работает. I would like to hope that uh, this small gulp of uh, hope is a prelude to the quenching of the global thirst for peace and security. I'll sign the proclamation.
to Washington. Our relationship has not been so promising or seemed so promising in many years. We can achieve the arms reduction that lies before us and progress in other areas. An historic improvement in our dealings with each other and in the cause of peace is possible. I would like to survey briefly the whole shape of our relationship to open our exchange. On arms control, we are near major achievements. Issues remain, but they can be solved. And on human rights and bilateral issues, we see some progress and a lot more to be done. The area where we're most disappointed concerns regional conflicts. So let me begin there. Regional conflicts are dangerous for both sides. They have blocked our cooperation in the past and could continue to do so. They have local sources, but they're not purely local. They engage the superpowers. Our concern with the Soviet policy is that it causes or inflames such conflicts by seeking to impose a political system that has not been chosen by the people there. supply of arms to some regimes. There can be no general improvement in our relations while such Soviet policies continue, but if these policies change, for the better than great improvements, I think, are possible. Afghanistan is the most troubling case. There will be no solution as long as the communist-dominated regime in Kabul, however disguised, is the goal. The Afghans will fight this and be safe by it. So long as the war drags on, it will be a drag on the relationship and the danger of the whole. One way or the other, the other regional conflicts in Central America, in Goa, Ethiopia, and Cambodia resemble what's at hand. Efforts to impose by force an alien political system the people don't want. We were trying to overcome that legacy in internal affairs. We would like to have a good soul for us to have a We have parallel interests in ending the war in 